What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you a video on Cassette Beasts, a game that takes the Pokemon formula and makes a few changes to it that I think add quite a bit to the experience, which is why I'm taking a look at it today, though I will admit this is not a game I am planning on reviewing. But nonetheless, we're going to dive into it and talk about a few of the things it changes to one of the most well-known franchises out there. Though first up, I do have to tell you that I was given a copy of this game from the public Raw Fury, which is how I'm putting out this video on the day of its release. That said though, let's actually talk about the game a little bit. Cassette Beast sees us washed ashore of an island where no one can leave. People from all different cultures and points in time have washed up upon this island that is covered in monsters, and while people have been able to carve out a living for themselves here, the monsters are a problem, and they deal with this problem by using cassette tapes to turn into monsters. So rather than catching them, you transform into them, and you do this by using cassette tapes. And while this naturally leads into turn-based combat, much like the Pokemon series, that's pretty much where the similarities end. Rather than capturing monsters, you record them on a cassette tape, which makes the tape for you to then use to turn into, and you can have a variety of these with you to use in combat. And speaking of combat, the first thing to remember here is that you are turning into the monsters, which means there is a health pool for the tape as well as you personally. Whenever one of your tapes is brought to zero health, it is destroyed for a time being, and you are put back into your human form. If you have other tapes, you can transform into them, or if you take enough damage to your health, you lose. Each tape uses a Ability points, and you'll gain two of these every turn up to whatever your maximum is. Ability points are required to use your stronger abilities. Most monsters will have an ability that doesn't cost anything, but you'll have to build up AP to use the strongest stuff. And you'll usually be battling with someone who acts as a sort of party member. There is more than one of them. And another important aspect to combat is managing your relationship with these people, which usually just involves doing side quests for them. That's important because the closer you are to the people you are doing battle with will enable fusions. Rather than a sort of evolution system, Cassette Beast uses a fusion system. You and the person taking part in combat with you can fuse your beast into a single, unique beast that combines the stats and movesets of both into something stronger alongside doubling your AP gain, and those systems work together to provide a somewhat different experience than you might be used to. Though you can adjust this further, with some difficulty options that allow you to adjust various parts of the AI as well as level scaling. So you can potentially provide yourself with a challenge rather than just being able to steamroll everything. But the monsters you are capturing recordings of also provide other benefits as well, such as exploration-based abilities. For instance, the ability to glide over potential obstacles, move along the water, etc. So capturing them also serves as a sort of passive progression which allows you to traverse more of the game world. The world itself is open world, so to speak. You can pretty much freely move about and do what you will, with the main goal of tracking down what they call Archangels to hopefully learn of a way off the island and back to wherever it is you came from. Now, the last thing I want to talk about in this video is type matchups. So each monster will have a type associated with it alongside the various moves they can learn. However, this part is is actually my favorite. Rather than this being a simple matter of damage or stat increases, etc., what they did with the typings is something quite a bit different. Each one of them has potentially a different effect depending on what type it is hitting. For example, when an air type, so to speak, attacks a plant type, it uproots the monster, which gives it a pea drain, which means it doesn't regenerate its abilities as fast. Or if you attack a metal type with a poison type, the poison lingers on the metal's blades and turns its attack into more potent abilities that now deal extra damage. So rather than there just being a set stat system with either increasing or decreasing numbers, the type matchups do various things depending on how you're interacting with them. And between that and the fusion system, I think it adds a lot 
lot of potentially very interesting things to the combat system that really shake up the more tried and true formula of the Pokemon franchise. And I think that is pretty much where we will leave this one. This game is again out today, so you can take a look at it for yourself if you like, but it's also coming to Steam, of course, PC Game Pass, and I believe there's a Nintendo Switch release planned as well. I don't have any pricing information for you, but as long as it's not outrageous, I do think that this game offers enough unique mechanics on a tried and true formula to be worthy of mention, which is why I decided to make a video about it, even though this isn't exactly the kind of game I would normally cover. But that is going to do it for me, so by all means, let me know what you think of the title down below, which of course means to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day. Thank you.